In today's video, we are going to be discussing the properties of addition and multiplication. So the first property that we're going to cover is the commutative property. Basically what this means is that we can move the numbers that we are performing operations on and we are not going to affect our answer. There's the commutative property of addition and there's the commutative property of multiplication. We're going to go through both of them and give examples of both. So when we think about the commutative property of addition, what we're really focused on here is that we can change the order of what we are adding and it's not going to affect our answer. So using variables, and we're going to put some numbers to this in a second, a plus b is equal to b plus a. So what this is saying is that if we can move around the a to that second position, so a is taking the place of where b is, and then b is switching to where the a was to begin with, it does not matter. As long as those two numbers are being added together, we're going to get the same answer. So for this problem, uh, let's go ahead and do some substitution that we've been doing. So in this case, a is always going to be equal to two and b is going to be equal to three. We're gonna keep it simple. Uh, and this will be used throughout the video. a is always going to be two and b is always going to be three. Uh, I'll make sure to remind you that. So if we were to look at this and we substitute in wherever we have an a with a two and wherever we have a b with a three, let's see if the commutative property of addition works. So in this case, we would have two plus three is equal to three plus two. It doesn't matter what number comes first, whether it's a two or a three. When we add these two numbers together, they will always equal the same thing. And in this case, two plus three or three plus two is both equal to five. And that's what we mean by the commutative property of addition. It's just saying that when we have numbers that we are adding together, it does not matter the order in which that they are presented. Now, if we wanna focus on the commutative property of multiplication, the reason I'm doing this on the same page and very close to one another is that we're talking about the same property and these things are going to look very similar, eerily similar to one another. What this means is, is that A times B is equal to B times A. And you can see the similarities between what we did with commutative property of addition and now multiplication. What we're doing is, is we're flipping or changing the order in which we have these numbers. And it does not matter which number comes first or which comes second, we're going to get the same result. So let's go ahead and we're going to use a is equal to two, b is equal to three, we're going to substitute into this problem and see if this commutative property of multiplication works. Remember, commutative property basically means that it doesn't matter the order in which these numbers show up. So. A is two, so two times three is equal to three times two. All right, doesn't matter if it's written like this or it's written uh, in the opposite way. Two times three is six, three times two is six. Both of these things are equal to one another and that is the commutative property of multiplication. Basically saying it doesn't matter the order in which these numbers uh, show up in our multiplication problem, whether it's two times three or three times two, you're going to get the same result, the same number at the end. Next up, we're gonna talk about the associative property of addition and multiplication. What this means is that when three or more numbers are added or multiplied, they can be performed in any order and our answer is going to remain unchanged or it's going to be the same. Now, let's look at what this uh, actually looks like. It's hard to understand in words. So we're going to begin by discussing the associative property of addition. What this means is, is that the order in which we add three things together does not matter. We would get the same answer. In this case, we're adding B and C first, and then we would add A because remember PEMDAS, we do parentheses first. And this would be equal to if we were to add A and B to begin with and then add C. We're going to go back to what we used in our last problem, but we have to add in that C is going to be equal to 4. So let's go ahead and substitute in our numbers for our variables and see what we get and display what the associative property of addition really uh, means. So we're going to start here. A is equal to 2, so we're going to have 2 
I'll put it over here. 2 plus, and then we're going to have 3 plus 4 in parentheses. So that means that we have to do 3 plus 4 first is equal to 2 plus 3 in parentheses. So we would do that first in our second part of our problem, plus 4. All right, and we're going to examine, does this really matter which order that we, uh, or what we add first in our problem? So let's go ahead and check this out. If we were to do 3 plus 4 first, well, that would be 7. And then we would have to add 2 to that. Here, we're doing 2 plus 3 first, which is equal to 5 plus 4. 2 plus 7, well, that's equal to 9. 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. And you can see it does not matter what we choose to add first. If we're adding three or more numbers together, there could be four numbers here. It would not matter which order that we did those in. We would still result in our same final answer. Okay, adding 3 plus 4 first and then adding 2 is equal to 9. Same thing as adding 2 plus 3 first and then adding 4 to that result. We got 9. So this is going to be the same type of setup and the same type of thing for the associative property of multiplication. So if we look at the associative property of multiplication, it looks eerily similar to what we did with the associative property of addition. Okay, It does not matter, or this is what the property says, it does not matter whether we multiply B and C first and then multiply by A or if we were to choose to multiply A and B together and then multiply by C. Okay, this looks very similar, except all of our addition signs have turned to multiplication. So let's go ahead and substitute in and see if this property checks out, if it really does not matter in which order we choose to multiply three numbers together, we would get the same thing. So we would have two times in parentheses, remember that means that we have to do this first, 3 times 4, substituting in, is equal to, in parentheses, 2 times 3 times 4. And then we would go ahead and work this out. We have to do what we do in parentheses first, right? Parentheses, exponents, remember PEM, uh, PEMDAS. 3 times 4 is 12, so we're going to rewrite this. 2 times 12 is equal to... And then we would have to do parentheses on this right-hand side in this expression over here. 2 times 3, which is 6, times 4. 2 times 12, double 12 is 24. And 6 times 4 is equal to 24. So you can see here, this is the associative property in action. It did not matter if we multiplied 3 and 4 first or if we multiplied 2 and 3 first and then we multiplied by our last numbers that were outside of our parentheses, we get the same end result. The last properties that we're going to discuss are the distributive properties of addition and subtraction. And what this means is, is that we are allowed to multiply add-ins and separately... Oh, what's an add-end? It's easier if I show you with numbers. So what we mean by an add-end is we're just basically meaning two numbers that are added together. So if we look at this problem right here, just with variables, we have a times, in parentheses, b plus c. So that means that we would have to add b and c first, and then we could multiply by a. The other way that we could solve this, and the distributive property allows this to happen, is that we can do a times b, which is a, b, when two variables are right next to each other, it means that we are multiplying them, plus a times c. So we would be distributing this a times b and a times c, and then we can add those products together, and we would get the same answer as if we were to add b and c together and then multiply by a. So let's go ahead and work this out with those established uh, numbers that we have designated for A, B, and C. So A was 2, so we have 2 times, okay, another way to write multiplication, because if we're using variables, sometimes you use X as a variable, so an asterisk is a good way to show multiplication once we are using variables times 
3 plus 4 is equal to, well, A times B, so 2 times 3. plus a is 2 times 4. I'm going to go ahead and work this out. We have to do parentheses first, and we're not going across this equal sign. We're going to solve each uh, side of our equation to simplify it uh, and simplify each expression. So here we have parentheses, 3 plus 4 would be 7, so we would have 2 times 7 is equal to and let's go ahead and do both of these multiplications first, and then we'll add them together. Remember, PEMDAS, parentheses, then exponents, and then multiplication. Uh, so then we would do 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 2 times 4, which is 8. 2 times 7 is 14. 6 plus 8 is 14. And you can see distributive property it's the same thing whether we add these two numbers together and then multiply by two or if we decide to distribute this multiplication of two to this uh, three and to the four which we did in the second half of our uh, equation here we would get the same exact answer and this same thing is true if we were to do it with subtraction so we're going to go over the distributive property of subtraction next so here we have the distributive property of subtraction, and we can see the only thing that has changed between the distributive property of addition and subtraction is the fact that we are not adding B and C together, we are now subtracting, but we are thinking the same way about it. And we're distributing this multiplication of A to the B and to C, all right? So let's go ahead and plug some numbers in here and see if this property checks out, if it's really true. Um, so we have two, times 3 minus 4. Oof, I've come into a problem. I need to choose some different numbers because I do not want to multiply by a negative number. Now, I know that this would still work, but for our brain's sake, let's choose some different numbers. So I have chosen some different numbers. I kept it pretty simple still. The only thing that we're doing is we're going to change b to be 5 so that we do not get a negative number when we subtract them. Um, obviously, if we're working through a problem, we can't just change the numbers to make them work for us. But in order to show you this example, uh, I want to make sure that it's as simple as possible because uh, we're not really worried about doing the math right now. We just want to show what this property really means. So here we go. 2 times, so we're going to substitute in, b is now 5, so this would be 5, oh, I wrote a b, so this would be 5, okay, that's a 5, minus 4, we can do this, is equal to 2 times 5 minus a times c, which would be 2 times 4. Now, another way to write multiplication is also to put numbers that are right next to each other in parentheses. This also signals that we are multiplying some numbers together. We would go ahead and solve this then. Remember, we're solving this side independently from this side. So 5 minus 4, because that's in parentheses, so we have to do that first. 2 times 5 minus 4, which is 1, is equal to 2 times 5, which is 10 minus 2 times 4, which is 8. 2 times 1 is 2, and 10 minus 8 is 2. All right, so this shows that our distributive property works. It does not matter whether or not we choose to either subtract these two numbers that are in parentheses first, or we can distribute this multiplication of 2 to both of the numbers that are inside of those parentheses, and we would get the same end result.